Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 409. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 407 to 412. Hey, in this video here, uh, we have a sports data set. There's some guys, some teams, there's some TDs, catches, and throws. And what we need to do is extract the actual max number of TDs and get the name. Now, this would be easy if we did not have any duplicates, but we have duplicates. There's a bunch of people that have max TDs of seven. Uh, same with catches and throws. So we're going to have to switch over and do some array formula stuff here. The first thing we need is we need to ask what number is the top number, top catch, top throws. That's easy. We use max. Then we have to count how many ties there are. We'll do that up here. And then we're going to have to create an array formula down here. It's like doing lookup, but we have to return multiple values. All right. So the first thing is uh, top TD. That's easy. Max equals max. And we are going to use this column. I'm going to click there, Control Shift Down Arrow. And notice that's a relative cell reference. Now, will that work? Because notice we have TDs, catches, throws, right? I'm going to put a close parenthesis. Will that relative cell reference work? Yes, because TDs, catches, throws are exactly in the same order. So when we copy the formula over, the blue one will move here and then here. So I can enter this with Control Enter and then drag it over. And you, of course, can put it into edit mode and prove to yourself that, in fact, it did move. Now we need to count. Because how many are there ties? Now, notice here I put the formula and then copied over. Well, the same formula is going into all the cells. So I can simply highlight all the cells that are getting the same formula. And in the active cell, say equals count if. Count if will count given a criteria. It needs a range and a criteria. So I'm going to highlight this range right here. Control Shift Down Arrow. Again, it's relative, same as the max. And comma, the screen tip says, hey, give me a comma. And what's the criteria? Oh, this right here, relative cell reference. Close parentheses. Now, I've highlighted all the cells, so now I can simply hold Control and tap Enter. And sure enough, if I come over here and edit it, you can see it's counting how many 15s there are in that column, which is exactly what we want. So we have three ties, none, and two. Now, here's the big array formula. And I've done similar formulas. Um, the first part of it is going to be we have to uh, we want to list the names vertically, so we have to be able to turn the formula off when it gets past row three. So we're going to say equals if, and we're going to use the rows. This is a number incrementer inside of a formula. We need a way to get a number one, two, three, and when it gets past here, this will say four, five, and the formula will turn off. We're going to say we're sitting in H9. So I'm going to say H dollar sign locked in front of the row reference, colon H9, close parentheses. Whoops. So that is a, um, there we go. So locked, not locked. As we copy it down, it'll increment numbers 1, 2, 3. And we're going to have to say, uh, is that less than or equal to this, right? Because we want this formula turned off when it gets past 3. So I'm going to say F4 to lock it going down, but not across. Because when the formula comes over here, it needs to be looking at that 1. So that's the on off switch. The value of true is going to be our lookup. And the lookup function is index. The array, now this is the TDs, and then top catches, and then throw. So we're going to come over here. And I'm going to click in the top cell. Oh, I'm sorry, we need guy. These are all, um, we're returning the name. So the actual array of values that we're looking up are the names. I'm going to click on the top, Control Shift Down Arrow. And I'm going to hit the F4 key, because this one is going to be used in all three columns. We're always returning names, even though for the different columns, we're going to be looking at TDs, catches, or throws. That's the lookup. That's the easy part so far. Now, comma, the whole complexity from 
this lookup formula that returns multiple values comes from the fact that we need multiple row numbers. And as we go down, we're going to need to extract different row numbers. Now let's go look at this right here. Right now we need guy 2, which would mean in our data set, this array for the index needs either a 1 or a 2. So to extract guy number 2, we need the number 2, because that's row 2. The next 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4. And finally, the uh, this third 7 duplicate is row 9. So notice we have a bunch of rows. We could tell the index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. But we really want 2, 4, and 9. How do we do that? We're going to use the small function and if. The small function takes the smallest of some from some array. So we'll take the first smallest, and then the second smallest, and then the third smallest. Uh, but the array needs to be uh, an if function, because we need to say, hey, small, what I want you to look at is if this range right here, and guess what? That needs to be locked, so I'm going to start hitting my F4. It needs to be locked going down, because we're going to have names extracted, so that same TD range needs to be locked going down. But when you go to the side over to top catches, no dollar sign in front of the column reference because it needs to move over to co uh, the catches. That range, please say if, when that's equal to this one, this number 7. You have to hit F4 qu twice to lock it going down, but not to the side. Because guess what? We need to say, hey, when it equals 7, that's row 2, row 4, row 9. So. If that's equal to that, then what do we want? What do we want the small to return? Now, I'm going to type a comma. Uh-oh. Well, I can get rid of that cell reference. I was trying to get to this. This if, we're going to give it row numbers. But just, just go back a moment and remember, what does the small need? We need uh, it needs row numbers because right here, the index needs row numbers. So all the way in this if, what do we need? If it's equal to that 7, we need to get, tell it a row. So we're going to use the row function. Row of, and it's always going to be the same set of ranges. So I'm just going to highlight this and hit F4. Because doesn't matter, all three TD catches and throws columns need the same number of rows from the same guy section. So I'm going to use that row. Now that won't work because row, this row, the row function is looking at the actual row. So it'll say 2. We actually need it to say 1. So how do we do that? We, say, we subtract from this minus row of this right here. F4 to lock it. Now, what in the world is that going to do? What's row 2 minus row 2? Oh, it's 0. So we have to add one. Now, why do we always go through this? In fact, I learned this from Aladdin and Dominique at the Mr. Excel message board. The reason we go through this complexity to get the row numbers is because all of those cell references are contained in this data set. So if you were ever to cut and paste somewhere else, it would always get the right row. So if we took this and copied it maybe down here, it would still be taking row 6 minus row 6 plus 1, and it would give us 1. That is why that particular construction works so well. Now, that's the value of true, which is the row number the index needs. We do not need a false right here. So we close parentheses. And then the small. Now, guess what? This whole if thing right here, if I were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, you could see it has a false, a 2, a false, a 4, and a 9. There's the 2, the 4, and the 9 that we need. How in the world are we going to extract it? I'm going to Control-Z. you got to say, give me the first, second, and third smallest. There it is right there. That's the number incrementer inside of other formulas. So I'm copying that. I'm going to type a. Uh, comma, and that K is bold, so I can control V. And that'll give me 1, 2, 3, which will extract the 2, 4, 9. Close parentheses. On that, notice the row number. We've just given it that, so we close parentheses on that because we don't have a column. Now we're back to the value of true. This whole index is the value if it true. So comma and the value of false, that relates to the original um, rows and count here, we want a blank if that thing comes out false. Close parentheses, and that's our formula. Control, Shift, and Enter. I'm going to double click and send it down, and then I'm going to copy it over here. 
and sure enough, it extracts. And so you can, you know, put it into edit mode and look. Uh, if we come over here and say this was not a seven, this was a six. As soon as I hit enter, watch, I hit enter, and now we have guy two and nine. So that is a really cool lookup uh, for a max value. Uh, given three different uh, lookups, TDs, catches, and throws, and returning multiple values. All right, we'll see you next trick.